So what is it that the elite dribblers in football do that you're not doing that allow them to be some of the most effective dribblers in football? And when I'm talking about effective dribblers, I mean players that are able to pick the right decision more times than not. They're able to put defenders under pressure, have close control of the ball while dribbling, make the right decision knowing when and when not to, and all of these different things. You know, what separates the players that are able to use their dribbling ability to great effect in matches versus the players that are not doing that. So that's coming up next. Welcome to the channel. This is Simply Soccer. My name is Dave. If you are new here where I'm creating videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. If you haven't already, make sure you get my free ebook, Game Changer. It is 50 plus pages, just full of great drills, training, exercises, mindsets, and all that to help you take your game to the next level. Now, without further ado, let's get into the first thing going in reverse order with number four that elite dribblers do that you are probably not doing, but if you start doing it, it might help you get closer to that level. Now, one of the first things you will notice when you're watching some of the elite dribblers um, is that most of the time, they keep it very, very simple. Now, this could be little cuts and feints and turns and quick changes in direction. Sometimes you'll see some of the best dribblers just push the ball past an opponent whose momentum is on the other foot and go by them that way. Now, this takes a lot of practice and intelligence intelligence to do, but you'll see they're not usually using fancy skills. If we look at one of the best dribblers in history of football, Messi, he doesn't usually do fancy step overs, flicking it over people and all this different stuff. He has just mastered cuts, feints, and chops for the most part, again, at an elite level, which allows him to beat so many different opponents. He knows when to time each thing, and you can notice he's not doing very fancy things. Now, you might see Neymar and Ronaldo and other players do fancy things sometimes, but even if you watch these players, most of the time, you'll see they beat opponents with feints, cuts, chops, changes in pace, and so on. Now, it's fine to have other moves that you could consider a little more complex in there, but for the most part, the elite dribblers are keeping it simple. They're just masterful at these simple little things. In fact, in the comments put, I am training to master the simple skills in football if that resonates with you so that you can align more to that. And now we'll move on to number three. Now, number three is they can dribble either way very comfortably. Now, I'm not talking about being able to dribble on either foot because if you look at someone like Lionel Messi, it is clear that he favors his left side and he can dribble at a world-class level on that side. I don't know about his right. He can do it competently on his right, but not necessarily at the same level. What I mean is it doesn't even matter if he goes to his right because he still is able to cut, feint, turn back, and keep control of the ball and do certain things and maneuver on that side as much as he can on the other. Now, he might be a little bit better on the other, cutting in um, onto his left, but he can also maneuver very effectively on the other side. Now, that means he can use his right well enough to be able to cut back in order to control the ball, you know, beat an opponent or whatever else, but he's still comfortable going to that side. And why this is, is important is because it means a defense could try and show him just onto his right and he's still going to be able to maneuver and dribble and do damage even if he's taken onto that side. Essentially, there isn't much of a weakness of him going on that side. Cristiano Ronaldo, same thing, right? You put him onto his left, he can still score on that side, he can still dribble on that side, he can still get himself back onto his right from that side, cut, feint, turn, or whatever else. Now, a lot of players that are one-dimensional, if you put them on, say, their left foot, if they're right-footed, they're not going to be able to do too much and you've probably found their weakness. They might lose the ball, they might not be able to maintain and they might not be able to do any damage if you put them on that side. And so it's very easy to show them on that side and you've neutralized them. But for the best dribblers, it doesn't matter which way you show them, they can go out the left, they can go out the right, they can fake one way, go the other, or do it the other way as well. Um, and this leads to them being so incredibly unpredictable, not knowing exactly how to defend them. And really, a lot of times with these dribblers, it's like, how can I make them do less damage versus more damage? Like, I guess if I show Messi onto his right, I can try and do that at least, it will be less less damage if I show him onto his left, but he's still going to be able to maneuver in that situation. So if you're enjoying this video so far, or you're getting something out of it, please hit that like button and we'll move on to number two. Now, number two is one of the most important and it's dribbling IQ because again, you could be one of the best dribblers technically in the world, but if you don't know when you should dribble, when you should pass, when you should beat one or two opponents or kind of react in that way when it's time to give the ball up, then you're not gonna be so effective. Dribbling IQ, like IQ in any area of football, when to pass, when not, when to shoot, when not, when to be in this space versus this space is so incredibly important because again, if you are dribbling over dribbling um, in situations where you 
you shouldn't. You're going to be predictable. Opponents are just going to kind of box you out and take the ball from you. If you're under dribbling when you're a very good dribbler, you're not doing as much damage as you could. For example, imagine Messi never taking an opponent one-on-one. -on -one. It would be a waste of his ability. Or imagine some like Neymar's like, I'm never going to, you know, I, I don't want to take an opponent one-on-one. -on -one. Now, a lot of times he won't. You know, you will see a lot of these best dribblers, these elite dribblers won't always take the opponent on. You'll see Messi pass, do one-twos, maybe switch the play. Same with Neymar. But when they see the opportunity and their IQ kicks in, their instincts kick in, and they see the opportunity that dribbling will actually help them, will exploit the defense. There's a gap for them to exploit. Or if they dribble into this space, they'll create space for others. Or they think they can really beat this man and do damage. They will take it and they will usually make the right decision more often than not. Again, this is so important. It's not just about being a good dribbler technically. You need to know when to do certain things, what move is appropriate. You know, sometimes it's just going to come down to being able to react well as well, um, knowing how to put yourself in those kinds of situations. But you need to develop the IQ around this, which a lot of it is going to come from experience, but also being aware of it as well. Um, but when you do that and you mix that with incredible dribbling ability, you can go on either side. And the next thing we're going to go over, you're going to be an amazing uh, player with the ball at your feet. And number one, you will notice with any elite dribbler, um, and it's they understand what type of touches to take depending on the situation. For example, if they're in tight space and they want to really keep the ball close, they will take a lot of different quick touches on the ball versus if they have a lot of space to work with and they're running into it, they will take fewer touches that are pushed out further. One of my favorite players who used to do this so, so effectively, and it made him one of the best dribblers in the world at the time, was Ricardo Kaká. He used to beat players with simple changes in direction, being able to push the ball effectively into space. He was one of the best at this. You would notice he would just fly by people because he knew when to keep the ball in close control um, when so if a defender stuck their leg out to get him he'd be able to take it away and he knew when to push it into space and he was so skillful so good at dribbling he always seemed to push it out the exact distance he needed to push it out so when he needed to stretch his legs and he knew he could beat someone for pace he would push it into that space and he would run with it but he also could switch immediately into taking quick touches if he needed to to beat an opponent to size someone up to make sure the ball was close to his body again that comes down to dribbling IQ but you need to be good at both of these things. Being able to dribble in close control, taking many little touches, being able to move the ball quickly, being able to you know, take many touches in a short amount of time so that if anyone goes in, boom, you can take it away from them. Or if there's an opening, the ball's close to you, you can flick it to your teammate or put them in on goal, right? But you also need to have the ability to push it effectively into space when it's available so you can run onto it, to push it past an opponent if there's space available so you can run onto it and beat them in that way as well. And if you learn actually these two techniques, that's going to go a long way to improving your dribbling ability. In fact, before ending the video, I will link down below the Kaka video I did on him analyzing this dribbling style. So you can go check that out. It's from a few years ago, um, but it just showed, you know, how he would do this. And I think it's really good to look at analyzing his game if you want to become an effective dribbler in this way. Of course, there's so many players like Messi, for example, does this perfectly as well. And so many other players, Ronaldo does it well. Um, there's so many examples, but I analyzed Kaka because he was one of my favorite players from my childhood and he did this so amazingly in his prime so anyway thank you so much for tuning into this video and i will see you in the next one